Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from the New Testament, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and They abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but Perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Do you remember toilet paper? Do you remember those mad scrambles in the stores that happen to have some on hand? Do you remember stories of arguments and fist fights over who would get those precious rolls? It was not one of our finer moments. There have been plenty of heartwarming stories of human kindness over the past few months. But when we think back to the toilet paper wars, we have to admit to a lack of love among us. Those things are obvious, especially when incidents are immortalized on social media. Many of us are inclined to take the posture of the Pharisee in Jesus' parable, thanking God that we're not like that. But here is the trouble for well-meaning people like ourselves. After four abnormal months of living with a global pandemic, exhaustion. We run out of patience. We run out of compassion. I've wondered what makes some of us thrive and some of us crumble during this long season, this time of pandemic, with no end in sight. I sense that there are some tools that are good to have. There are tools that we could have acquired long ago and honed over time, but maybe it's not too late if you find yourself empty-handed. Certain tools come to mind that Christians do well to possess and put into practice. There's the habit of constant prayer. Then there's the conviction of the truth of the gospel. Remembering that run-on toilet paper highlights the importance of another tool that Christians of all people ought to be using. This would be compassion for others. It's hard, though, when you're going through something that leaves you depleted. You might say, 
I have nothing left. The gas tank is empty. Still, though, there is need for people of compassion, people whose love does not quit. That's a tool of great value in a time like this. Here is some remarkable news that comes straight from the Bible. Love can keep flowing because love is at the very heart of the universe. I must clarify what I just said. It's not an idea or a principle that I'm talking about. That would be something impersonal. The reality, though, is different. It is this. God is love. God is an eternal community of love consisting of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is love, and that love has overflowed to create the world in which we live. God's love has overflowed especially in the unique act of self-giving, the sending of the Son of God to remove the barrier which our sin has built. You see, it's God's love that is primary. God's love is expressed in action. Motivated by love, God has done something for us. We have been loved by God, and we continue to be loved by God. You see where I'm going in this sermon? The Bible is so clear. We love because God, who is love, has first loved us. Can you see how it's constantly replenished, even when we run dry? There's a clear logic. We're more like a conduit in which we, who have been loved by God in a concrete way, go on to love other people by what we do. It's not complicated. It's not hard to understand. It's very hard to sustain, though. So we have to turn again to that same part of the Bible that tells us that God is love and ask the how question. How can we be a conduit of the love of God when it gets really old? There's a little word that I think is very important. It's a verb that's used in four of the verses in this passage of Scripture that we've read. And it's the word abide. To abide is to dwell or to live or to remain. Our reading tells us that God is love and that God has loved us first. The fitting response on our part that emerges in this teaching is not grit your teeth, try really hard to love other people. When you're really exhausted, it doesn't help. Rather, the response is to dwell in God's love, which has taken action to save us and continues to be extended to us without interruption. In other words, when we allow God to love us, when we're on the receiving end, that will so change us that we'll have the motivation and the energy to love the people in our world and to keep loving them over time. That's a tool we need in all seasons of life, pandemic or no pandemic. Though the need does show up more vividly these days. Everybody has a toolkit. There are things we pull out as we have need. It's important to have the right tool for the job at hand. Our toolkit for this pandemic must include the tool of compassion for others. And here is good news. God is love. God always loves us. We are always dwelling in that love. And because of that, even now, we have what we need to extend that love to others. Amen.